let's talk a little bit about funding for this project because you all, no. you all, you all have always, <laughs> y'all have always been very creative with the way in which you raise capital for your projects. Um, and yes. <laughs> Are you trying to hint at something too? No, you guys have like the kind of work we did before this. <laughs> so, so it just in general with Kickstarter, like the way the way in which it works. At what point did you realize that your fans were loyal enough that this would actually work for you? We didn't. <laughs> I honestly, didn't know. It was more like, hey, I hope this works. But um, well, we like you guys. I, I, we like you already anyway, and so it was like, hey, let's give them the opportunity. Maybe they'd be interested in something like this, and it turned out that they were. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's actually, I feel, like, I feel like the way we use the Kickstarter platform is completely not like all of the other projects that are on there. That platform is particularly for, um, it's like startup projects that are trying to get donations. And then you support it, and it's like, well, now I just feel good that I supported it, and maybe I'll get something in return. But we wanted to make sure that anyone who participated actually got something really worth their money. So there wasn't much like charity donation going on. We're not super into charity. Everything, all work needs to be paid for, and anything that's paid for should be like worked for. So, um, so yeah, we just use it really as a way to sort of pre-sell all of the stuff we were doing, and that in a sense, I mean, you have to get funding to like develop all of this and then the product and then scale it out or roll it out over time. And that usually comes from a label because um, previously the technology wasn't there to access fans directly. And so when we realized that in a way we were just bypassing what a label would do or a, a brand or something like that that would give us money and then we would have to pay it back plus interest later or they would own a piece of our music, um, it was like, hey, this is kind of like signing a record deal with fans, with the people. So, so that was a story we told, and it's a cool story. So looks like it worked out. Yeah. Is it humbling to see a room full of folks that supported you like this? Did you say, did you say humbling? Is it, hum <laughs> is it humbling? Oh, humbling, okay. Humbling. To see a room What's, full of folks. I wonder what humbling would be. <laughs> Make a song about it. <laughs> the humbling remix. The, the Humpty Dance, right? <laughs> is, it, is it humbling to see this many folks and just knowing that people all over the country wanted to support you putting out an album because they believe in you? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> very much so. It's actually, we feel very grateful. Um, and we hope that you guys feel grateful too. I hope that, yeah. like, that we've, like, this is sort of like, it's something we all, like, just did together. Even though we're up here and you're over there. No, it's, it's really great. It, it feels, honestly, I was thinking about this in the shower the other day, washing my hair. Yeah. Hey, who, sh who washes their hair? Yeah. Shout out. Shampoo. One person was like, boo. <laughs> <laughs> you have bugs in your hair, dude. Um, yeah, it was like, this, this, this moment in the history of Blue Scholars feels probably the most like, I felt at least when we made the first record years ago, just getting out of college and doing it entirely ourselves and with the help of our friends. And now we just sort of have drawn the circle bigger around new kinds of friends. Sometimes friends that I'll only talk to maybe once or twice, but you guys know that we're all, we're all doing this for the same reason, so let's go. Cool.